Between flight and security delays, missed planes, cancellations, and long layovers, there are many reasons why not every traveler is a happy traveler. But there's an interesting strategy to reduce stress at an airport in the largest city in Turkey. It walks on four legs, and it's a type of working dog you can pet, and you're encouraged to. One of these is named Alida, the other is named Kuki. They're not bomb or drug sniffing dogs, they're therapy animals at Istanbul Airport. Spending a few minutes with them isn't only for passengers, it's for anyone, including flight crews. A vet and coordinator of the project says the dogs went through a one-year training process and they only work a few hours a day before getting to rest. People who stop to pet them say it relieves anxiety and reminds them of their own pets back home. And an airport customer service manager says seeing the dogs interact with passengers brings many beautiful moments. A new warning about melatonin is next on The World From A to Z. I'm Carl Azus, happy to start off the week with you. Melatonin is a natural hormone that plays a role in when we sleep and when we wake up. Health officials say most people produce enough of it naturally, but there's been a significant increase in people using synthetic melatonin that's sold in stores. Many parents say they've given it to their kids to help them sleep. And though it's generally considered safe in adults when taken in limited doses over short periods of time, it does have side effects. Melatonin can cause headaches, nausea, drowsiness during the day, sometimes irritability or bedwetting in children. And doctors say not a lot is known about the long-term effects of the medicine taken by kids. Some problems with kids taking melatonin have led to a new warning by a supplement trade association. A trade group is asking the melatonin industry to voluntarily tighten standards after a study showed a large number of childhood emergency room visits related to the substance. It's a long time coming. A March CDC report found that between 2019 and 2022, ingesting melatonin while unsupervised led to some 11,000 children being seen in emergency rooms, with melatonin gummies involved in nearly 5,000 of those cases. You know, the cap is open, the child takes it because it, it's flavor, it's a flavored gummy. And it's it almost, you know, quite honestly, it tastes like candy. So they take it. Melatonin can help induce sleep or aid in changing someone's internal sleep clock or cycle. In recent years, demand for these supplements has skyrocketed. And along with it, children ending up in the hospital after taking melatonin while unsupervised. The thing we're most worried about, it has a central nervous system effect. It makes them, uh, makes the children so sleepy that they are hard to wake up. As a dietary supplement, melatonin does not have to go through FDA approval for safety, effectiveness, or labeling before it's sold to the public. But now, the Council for Responsible Nutrition, the leading trade association for supplements, has issued new voluntary guidelines, including new labels to warn about the dangers of drowsiness and the choking hazard for small children if not chewed properly. The council also stresses the need for makers to adopt child safety containers. Voluntary guidelines mean supplement makers don't have to follow them. If you're looking to get better sleep naturally, experts say avoid caffeine, go to bed at the same time each night, wind down with a book or magazine instead of TV or a phone, exercise during the day but don't eat or work out right before bed, and keep your room dark, quiet, and less than 70 degrees if you can. On this date in world history. The United States declared war on Mexico on this date in 1846. The Mexican-American War lasted two years and eventually expanded U.S. territory by more than 500,000 square miles. On May 13, 1981, Pope John Paul II survived an assassination attempt in Vatican City by escaped Turkish prisoner Ali Agcha. The leader of the Catholic Church later visited Agcha in prison and forgave him. Decades later, after his release, Agcha laid flowers at the tomb of the late Pontiff. And a British mom and mountaineer made history on this date in 1995. Alison Hargreaves became the first woman to climb Mount Everest without oxygen or help from Sherpas, local Tibetan guides. The 33-year-old reached the summit of Pakistan's K2 mountain three months later, but died in a massive storm on her way back down. Upward and upward. Which of these words comes from a Latin term meaning north wind? Zephyr, Australis, Boreal, Arboreal. 
The reason why the Northern Lights are also known as Aurora Borealis is because Boreal relates to the world's northern regions. It's common to see the Northern Lights in northern places like Norway, Canada, Alaska. It is not in spots as far south as Arizona, Louisiana, and Georgia, but that's what happened over the weekend. A rare view of the Northern Lights thanks to a powerful geomagnetic storm. Increased solar activity causes auroras that dance around Earth's poles, known as the Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis. Inside the Earth is this churning molten iron and nickel, and it creates this magnetic field that enables your compass to work. And so this is what causes the charged particles to come down at the North and South Pole. And it's the speed of those particles passing through the atmosphere that creates the aurorae. The Space Weather Prediction Center observed conditions of an extreme geomagnetic storm Friday evening, reaching a level 5 out of 5 severity which hasn't been recorded since 2003. The particular sunspot we're looking at closely now is actually 15 times the size of Earth. So it's huge. We observed these eruptions. We recognized that we're going to impact Earth. So we were able to give the power grid and other technology owners and operators a heads up. That increased solar activity is giving Americans everywhere a dazzling colored light display. I'm Rob Kirkpatrick reporting. Bulldogs, Tigers, and Sun Devils, oh my! Starting in the Indiana city of Crown Point, a warm welcome to Mr. Wormer's class. Thank you for watching from Crown Point High School in the Hoosier State. Meantime, Mr. Nelson's class is with us from North Bend Central Middle School. Awesome, it's in North Bend, Nebraska, the Cornhusker State. And in the Palmetto State of South Carolina, we're happy to see Miss D. Giacintos and Miss Kitt's class at Charleston Collegiate School. Great to have y'all online in John's Island. Next stop is in New York City, where we're visiting a shop that looks like a deli and has all the ingredients, but is actually a type of art exhibit. Feast your eyes on this, and only your eyes. These happy little bagels are made entirely of felt. When you come into Felt's Bagels, you have a choice of 13 different bagels, and you can put whatever you want into it. So here I have an everything bagel. And down here, we have all the fillings. Add some guac, cheese, pickles, of course. Toss on some lettuce, some beef, onions. And there is your very own signature bagel. And all together, with all the bagels and the fillings, there are 2,300,000 different combinations that are possible. Sparrow was inspired to create Feltz bagels by New York City itself. The Lower East Side of Manhattan is something that I've always been very fascinated with, with the Jewish delis and the concentration of um, the sort of delicatessens, the bagel shops, and the real um, focus on like local food. You walk in, it's as though you're walking into a real shop with real bagels, with real cookies, with real pastries. The creativity and the artistry of this shop is beyond impressive. Just like any other deli, you'll find other goods too. Grab a Pepsi or a candy bar. Sparrow has been using felt since she was about six years old and believes part of the draw is that her bright and cheerful creations stimulate a feeling of nostalgia. It transports you into place where, you know, when you're a kid where things were much more comforting, it was a lot more easygoing. But some won't find it so easy going to pay for it. Each bagel with filling reportedly sells for $250 after Sparrow sews it up for you. Some would say that's a lot of bread. Others would say it's art. Things are looking up once again for our last story today. It wasn't just parts of the U.S. that got a rare glimpse of the Northern Lights this week. Purple, indigo, and violet dominated the hues captured in this video above the United Kingdom Saturday. And about 600 miles southeast, check out the pink and green shades that danced over southern Germany. Along with reported sightings in Spain, the lights recall the novels of Ernest Hemingway. And if you're like, Consider Aurora's in the Stream, a flarewell to arms, a movable feast, the old man in the sea foam, the garden of Eden, the sun also flares, the dangerous shimmer, and of course, true at first light. It's illuminating how inspiring Aurora's can be when seeing them so far south is a boreality. I'm Carl Azus, and I've alighted on puns on the world from A to Z.